This is a good example on proof by mathematical induction where we look at recurrence relationships. What we have is a sequence of numbers u1, u2, etc. is defined by un plus 1, that's the n plus 1 term in the sequence, is equal to 4 times the nth term in the sequence un plus 2 where the first term in the sequence u1 is equal to 2. And what we've got to prove then is that for any positive integer n that the nth term un is equal to 2 thirds multiplied by all of 4 to the power n minus 1. So how do we do this? Well first of all we prove that it's true for n equals 1. So when n equals 1, that will be our starting point, what do we have? Well, we have here that u1 would be equal to 2 thirds multiplied by 4 to the power 1 minus 1. Well, 4 to the power 1 is obviously 4. 4 take away 1 is 3. 2 thirds of 3 leaves us with 2. And you can see that this is what we had up here. So, therefore, it is true for n equals 1. Now, what we do now is assume that it's true for n equals some value. We'll call it k. So, assume true for n equals k. And if that's the case, then what we're saying is that here, instead of writing n, that u k the kth term in the sequence is equal to 2 thirds of 4 to the power k minus the 1. So we now have to prove that on this basis that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So if we look at the term u k plus 1, what's it going to be? Well, we can draw on this recurrence relationship here because if n is equal to k, u k plus 1 must be equal to 4 u k plus 2. So I'll just write that in here, 4 u k plus the 2. Now we've got the kth term in the sequence u k, it's up here. So we can just substitute this into this equation here. So we've got 4 multiplied by all of uk, 2 thirds, 4 to the power k minus the 1. And then we have the plus 2 on the end here. So if we multiply this out, 4 times the 2 thirds is going to give us 8 thirds and then we've got 4 to the power k, alright? So that takes care of the first bit there. Now we've got 4 times the 2 thirds, which is 8 thirds, times the minus 1. So it's going to be minus 8 thirds. And then we've just got the plus 2 on the end. Okay, well let's just come down here next. So we'll just copy that u k plus 1 back in again. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, we can look at this 8 thirds as being made up of 2 thirds, okay, times a 4, that's our 8 thirds, times 4 to the power k. And then we've got the minus 8 thirds plus 2, which is 2 is 6 thirds, minus 8 thirds plus 6 thirds is minus 2 thirds. And what have we got next? Well, we can add these two together in the sense that this is 4 to the power 1 multiplied by 4 to the power k. So you would just add the powers because they're to the same base, base 4 here. So what we've got is 2 thirds multiplied by 4 to the power k plus 1. Okay, and then we've got minus 1 
because two thirds times minus one gives us that minus two thirds. And can you see that what I've got now is that u k plus one, wherever n is written, I've got k plus one. You've got two thirds, four to the power, k plus one. Okay? So therefore it is true for n equals k plus 1. Now, what we've seen then this is that if true for n equals k, okay, then it's true for n equals k plus 1. Then true for n equals k plus 1. Now, we know that it's true for n equals 1. So since true for n equals 1, therefore it's true for n equals 2, because we prove that it's true for the next value up, if it's true for a particular value. And if it's true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3, and 4, and so on. So therefore it's true for all positive integers and that's n belongs to the set of positive integers. Okay?